Eric Darling here with Darling Data Limited. Uh, I don't have the gall to call myself unlimited because I have some very strict limitations on things. Um, uh, California wine, most beer, pork chops. Uh, what else? I don't know. Some other stuff. Anyway, uh, now, that, now that we've been on a dinner date together, let's talk about how <coughs> we can use SP underscore human events to uh, track weight stats. Uh, we're going to use the store procedure in a little bit different of a way than we have in the past few videos where we set up a, um, a more permanent extended event session and sort of looked at the data that comes into there from different things happening. Uh, this time we're going to use it to sample uh, the weight stats for a duration of time on the server. And uh, since I was, so there's, there's a little bit of a funny, just sort of bit of coincidence in this video is uh, a while back, uh, the, the lovely, wonderful, talented uh, Eric EJ on Twitter, who uh, took over maintaining SQL query stress from Adam Mechanic when uh, Adam, Adam sort of open sourced that thing, uh, uh, had posted a blog post about um, uh, inserts. Well, it wasn't his post. Someone, rep someone else wrote it and did all this stuff. But uh, posted it was about inserts and GUIDs and integers. And uh, there was a lot of talk about index fragmentation. And uh, I've, I've, been, I've been working up some demos to show that it's not the index fragmentation that is a problem. And this is uh, sort of a, 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 a precursor to uh, those demos. This is just a, a, a test sort of proc that I have to do a bunch of singleton inserts with uh, different data types as the clustered primary key of the table. So uh, let's all give a round of applause to Eric E.J. who spelled also for two reasons. One, spells his name correctly. It's Eric with a K. And two, for doing a lot of great community work. I mean, aside from SQL query stress, he does a lot of stuff with entity framework and whatnot, trying to make that better for, uh, well, I guess for uh, all sorts of database folks, but, you know, I mostly work with the SQL Server folks who end up using entity framework. So round of applause there. We appreciate you, Eric EJ. You are, you are, you, you are truly an MVP in my heart, not just in Microsoft. <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's look at this, and uh, let's actually kick this off running. And while that kicks off running, we're going to start this. And this is just going to do a bunch of inserts. I and mean, it's going to take around a minute. Now, uh, well, th well, that runs. Um, I'm going to go well, tell you about a couple things with SP underscore human events. Uh, one is that, that when you run it for a sample like this, uh, there are a bunch of sort of analysis queries that it spits out at the end. If you use SP human events, to um, make per more permanent extended event sessions and do stuff with that. It will also create a bunch of views. This is all in the lovely documentation on GitHub. You can take a look at that if you're, if you're interested in uh, more information there. But it will also create a bunch of views that mimic the output of the session data that you see uh, when the store procedure finishes running for a duration of time. Uh, I do that because I don't want you to have to figure out how to query things on your own to get sort of uh, com uh, you know, commensurate results uh, in, in different ways that you might use the store procedure. Um, you know, I, I cre create the thing, I wrote the thing, and I want you to be able to use the thing however you feel, uh, however you feel comfortable and try to, try to give you as many ways to make it as easy as possible to get in and access things. <coughs> so when... You sample weight stats, and uh, you get you have the extended event run. Uh, it runs for however long you put in the se uh, second sample there for, uh, and then it kills and drops the extended event session at the end. Good, good, good. Now, let's look at what the results give us back. Uh, we have total weights for everything across all of the time that the um, the session ran for. Right, so this is total weights. Uh, here, well, look at there's a column called total weights. Uh, so we see how many how many instances of the weight occurred, um, the duration of time that ac accumulated for the weights, uh, the signal uh, duration, and then the average milliseconds per weight. So we know we can get a feeling for a few different things here. One is 
how many times the weight happened, right? Is it a lot or is it a little? Um, how much total time that weight was responsible for in the window of time that we measured and how long on average that weight lasted when it occurred, right? Like we don't want, um, uh, like, like if, if a weight happened like two or three times or there was a long, like say it was a lock weight or something like that, we would want to know how long queries were waiting on locks on average during that time to figure out if we have a locking problem. If the average milliseconds per weight for the locks was fairly low, then we know that it's probably not a locking issue. I mean, it's something we could dig into, but it's probably not going to be the first thing that I look at. The second one <clears throat> we have down here is total weights by database. So, um, if you have, I mean, a lot, most everyone has uh, multiple databases on their server, so you can figure out which databases had the most weights happen. <clears throat> Sometimes there is a null in the database name. That's not my fault. That's not me not being able to resolve a database name or something. Uh, that's in the extended event data. Uh, that's me pulling directly from the XML. So if database name and there is null, then uh, there's no, really nothing I can do about that for you. So, um, whatever. Sorry about that. Um, maybe, may, maybe, maybe you could file a bug report with Microsoft. Maybe you'll have better luck filing bug, re bug reports with Microsoft than I do. Uh, but you'll get a, just about the same information here. Uh, total weights, duration, uh, signal duration, and average milliseconds per weight. That doesn't change a whole lot from the total weights here because I don't have a bunch of very active databases, so everything's going to look pretty much down here like it does up here. But then <clears throat> the, the part that I like the most, the part that I think is the coolest, is this bottom section, which is total weights by query and database. So this is where uh, what I do, so what I do when I can do it is... Uh, find query plans and statement text for the uh, queries that ran and uh, accrued the weights that happened during the window of time that you measure. So again, this the, the total weights and stuff in here isn't going to look terribly different from what it looks like up here just because, you know, there's not a lot of activity on my server, just me pounding away with these inserts. So... <clears throat> uh, there are... So this is all going to be the same query text and plan like you know it, 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 it is a little bit repetitive um, I try to like get the SQL handles in the extended event and then go to the plan cache to look for those those SQL handles uh, in the plan cache so that I can figure out the text and the query plan for them right so I get that additional information from the plan cache if you're measuring something on site like this like like for a duration of time there's a pretty good chance that the plans will still be in the cache by the time this thing finishes running but um i can make no guarantees that it absolutely will be so uh if we look at the statement text here um this is sp human events doing a whole thing we don't really need to look at that that's it's a <coughs> quite a bit of code in there uh, we have the statement text of what ran. So this is uh, the insert that was happening. This is all the singleton insert stuff that was going on. Uh, this is the very unimpressive uh, query plan for all the inserts that were happening. Uh, we don't need to save that. But then, uh, you know, we can see in here, um, let's just go for these last bottom three rows because those are the ones that we have the weights for. Uh, we can see that um, these uh, queries uh, hit some write log weights. Um, there, the average duration was pretty quick there. We were able to push those writes through pretty quick. Uh, we hit some page latch and page latch, page latch EX weights. Those are also fairly quick here. We did accumulate a bit of time on them, but we also did a lot of them. Um, for this run that I did here of the insert test, uh, we did 4,000 iterations with 100 threads running uh, for a total of 400,000 iterations there. So 400,000 executions of those queries um, produced a fairly minimal weight. So our, our insert test, I think, was, uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty efficient, right? We, we were able to bang a lot of inserts into, into that table in, a, in about a minute. Um, 400,000 inserts a minute, pretty good, right? I wish I did that kind of business. <laughs> <laughs> maybe someday, maybe someday. Although, I, I, I'm not sure that there are 400,000 SQL Server customers per minute that I could I could get I'd get contracts signed for. I'd be very busy. I'd probably at that point be a, be the CEO of a large corporation with many minions uh, doing all all sorts of my biddings.
Ah, man. Gotta get some more minions. Anyway, uh, this is one way to use SP underscore human events uh, to track weight stats. Uh, again, you can also create a persistent extended event session to grab them. Uh, and uh, SP human events will create views for you uh, when you do that to, um, to grab uh, the uh, results that look like this as much as possible. Um, you know, the plant cache is a volatile place. And uh, I, I can't guarantee that the plans and everything will always be in there for you to um, have attached to the weights that happen. But there's not really much I can do about to fix that. Uh, I did think about involving query store here, but you know, in this in this day and age, uh, I still don't run into a lot of folks who have query store turned on, and uh, there would also be some additional complications in the code to you know make sure that the database has query store to go look in query store for the SQL handle that might not still might not even be in there um, it, depending on query store settings. So, uh, you know, it's a lot of complication for what is potentially very little reward, but uh, maybe, maybe sometime down the line, if, you know, Microsoft ever decides to have query store replace the plan cache and it, it is, you know, on by default for everyone in the world, which it is in SQL Server 2022, but, you know, hard time running into a lot of the people with that in production just yet um maybe maybe then it will be worth the code review but gosh i hope i'm doing something else by then i hope i'm retired <laughs> by the time that happens so uh anyway uh th th that's about all i had to say here so uh thanks for watching uh like and subscribe if that's the kind of thing you're into uh if not then i don't know just keep hitting just keep hitting f5 until a new video shows up i guess that's a good use, good 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 use of your time all right dbas just switch from hitting f5 and ssms on sp who is active to hitting f5 on my youtube video playlist to see if a new video showed up maybe you could maybe you could write some sort of program that just hits when you hit f5 in one place it hits f5 everywhere right just refreshes everything wouldn't that be nice like yeah anyway there I go again. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Um, uh, and I will be recording more videos about how I use other SQL Server community tools after this. Uh, I'm going to go through a few more of mine, uh, SP Quickie Store and SP Pressure Detector. And uh, then I'll do who is active and uh, probably the, the Blitz scripts as well um, because there are a couple of few of those that just do not get enough love, affection, and attention. Anyway, uh that's enough for now. Goodbye. Have a nice day. It's not it's it's still not Friday, I'm I'm told, which is very depressing. All right. Well, <clears throat> that's enough for me. That's enough of me. <laughs>